uh, vaccines. You know, now, you know, the president has received probably at least five doses of vaccine, as you know, a lot of us have, uh, and has also had the virus once. And that has really, you know, all of those elements uh, served to increase uh, his immunity. Plus, he, you know, we also have Paxlovid now, and uh, we've already heard uh, that he could take Reiner, a uh, dose of that. Hey guys, welcome back to my channel. My name is Devorah Darkins, and here we go. So the president of the United States just tested positive for COVID. Uh, there's a couple of other stories out there uh, about his mental state and now his physical state. And uh, some people are starting to think this is a little fishy and, and not to create any conspiracies here or anything like that. Um, it's it's getting a little crazy here. So what we're going to do is just react to this news. Uh, there's a couple other insights about this. And before we do, you already know what to do. Like, share and subscribe. Let's play the video. Listening and taking his remarks live uh, here in the Situation Room until this announcement that uh, the president has been tested positive with COVID. I want to go back. Uh, Anna Navarro, thank you very much. I want to go back to CNN's Kayla Tausche. She's on the scene for us as well. Kayla, I take it the White House has issued a statement uh, explaining uh, what, what is going on? The White House has just issued a statement confirming the president's diagnosis and saying that his symptoms are mild and he will be returning to Delaware where he will uh, self-isolate and follow CDC guidance as far as his activities from there, but he will be carrying out the duties of the presidency remotely from Delaware, according to Karine Jean-Pierre, the White House press secretary. The statement also includes a section from the president's doctor that says that he began experiencing some symptoms this afternoon, including uh, upper respiratory symptoms, a runny nose, and a non-productive cough. Uh, the doctor goes on to say that he felt okay for the first event of the day, but when he was not feeling better, uh, they decided to administer a COVID test. Uh, he says that the president does not have a fever, that his blood oxygen level is 97 percent, and that President Biden has received his first dose of Paxlovid, of course, the uh, treatment for COVID that the president last took in July 2022 when he last had COVID. But of course, this is not uh, the only time in recent weeks that the president has been feeling under the weather. He told the hosts of Morning Joe on MSNBC a few weeks ago that he received a COVID test around the time of the presidential debate in late June when he he had a cold at that time because he was feeling so poorly, uh, an attribute that he continues to point to to uh, defend his performance on stage that has spurred this crisis of confidence across the Democratic Party. So the White House confirming the president's diagnosis, saying his symptoms are mild. He's returning to Delaware and he is currently being treated with Paxlovid. Guys, when you physically see him walk and you hear him speak, does he sound like someone who is you know, really able to do the job, you know, the president of the United States, that is a very demanding job. Think about the energy that it requires. And it doesn't matter what side you're on, Is at a certain point, this has to be elder abuse. I mean, what, like, why do they keep, I believe right now what they're doing is they're really pushing him, right? And Obviously, it might be his own doing because he's defiant. He does not want to step down out of the race and he's going to keep pushing forward. Um, but every time we see him is such a sad situation. Let's actually take a look at this interesting information as well. So I have no way to truly verify this information here. However, I did see this on here and thought it was interesting. So there was six boosters that he has received up to this point. And, um, you know, it's quite a lot that, that that's quite a lot. So, you know, having look, having seen that and then hearing this news and then also hearing the news that the only way he's going to drop out is if his medical doctor says there's something wrong with him. Right. And matter of fact, let's take a look at the video where he says that. If there had some medical condition that emerged, if somebody, if the doctors came to me and said, you got this problem, that problem. But I made a serious mistake on the, in, the, in the whole debate. And, uh, and look, when I originally ran, you may remember it, I said I was going to be a transitional candidate. And I thought that I'd be able to move from this, just pass it on to someone else. But I didn't anticipate things getting so, so, so divided. 
You know, I, I find that answer also interesting because if you say that you wouldn't have, uh, you know, had Kamala Harris as your VP because you didn't think she would be able to be the president, why not just hand it off to her? Right? Like, if, if you went in campaigning on the fact that you were a transitional candidate and you chose Kamala Harris as the second in line because you believed she could do the job, right? Why not just hand it over to her? You made a mistake. You're clearly not in the best health, not like you were four years ago. The honorable thing to do would be to hand it over to her, right? But that's that that that's the way that I see it. And you know, I just think that's common sense, right? I mean, if Donald Trump is such a threat to democracy and he's this big, big, serious, serious, serious threat and our country will be lost forever. Why not just give it to her then? She's young, right? She's younger than you. Dana, what are you learning? There's a scramble going on right now, both in Wilmington and at the White House, but right now mostly in Wilmington, of course, where the president's campaign headquarters is because they're trying to figure out how to salvage as much of, if they can do any of the schedule that the president had planned. If they can do any of it remotely, if he can do anything from uh, his home in Rehoboth. They obviously don't know the answer to that, uh, primarily because they're not gonna know how he feels. But the hope inside uh, the campaign headquarters is that they can at least salvage some communication between uh, the president and voters, voters who he desperately needs to continue to connect with. Um, I cannot understate, uh, excuse me, underscore what David Chalian stated earlier enough, which is the feeling is, are you kidding me? This is yeah. the absolute right. last thing that they need. And that there is definitely a feeling that President Biden and the campaign around him just can't catch a break right now uh, because this was the moment, especially as this uh, as this convention comes to an end tomorrow and the focus hasn't really been totally away from President Biden, but it's been uh, away a little bit. But the focus is going to turn even more to President Biden and what is going on with him, that they needed yeah. him to be out, to be robust and to be campaigning. Yeah. I mean, listen, there's no sympathy here. They put themselves in this position. Right. You only use Joe Biden to run as president because at the end of the day, you guys did not want to elect Bernie Sanders. I don't know if you recall that Bernie Sanders was actually a better candidate, uh, had better poll numbers, had much more support from the public. And out of nowhere, he's removed out of the race and Joe Biden takes over. And he is the guy that they use because the assumption then was, hey, we're just going to use you to beat Donald Trump and that's it. Right. And not only are we going to do that, but we're also going to put Kamala Harris on your ticket. So it is in a line with our identity politics, because that's what Democrats do. They run on identity politics, meaning the color of your skin, your gender. Right. That's what they want to put forward in their messaging. And, you know, they were successful. So this time around, no one's thinking that he's actually going to run again and come to find out he is. Um, and it's their fault that they waited this long and didn't know that it would get to this. I, I don't know what they were thinking. Um, I don't think they probably were thinking. You know why? And I said this in another video. They were so busy focusing on Donald Trump, they forgot to focus on their own party. Who's going to run in 2024? They forgot about that. They really did not give it enough attention. And as a result, we are where we are today. But when you see him on the debate stage, you see him in the follow up interviews you hear the way that he talks it's like it's like a struggle I, it's exhausting listening to him I, I said this in another video it's like when he's talking i'm getting exhausted if donald trump is talking i'm getting energized and that's even if you don't like donald trump you're going to get energized in a negative way because you don't like him so you know they really need to go back and think really hard about what their next move is and you know what they may not even have one they may just have to ride this horse all the way to the end. And that may that actually might mean 
uh, they are not going to win the election. So, hey, that's what I think about this and my mindset. What about you? What do you think about this developing story uh, that, you know, he's under the weather again, just like he was in June when the when the debate happened and how he just made the remark that the only way he's going to drop out is because uh, if his doctor tells him so. Uh, he didn't say he was going to drop out because of the polls or the delegates. He said if his doctor tells him so. So let me know all of this and more in the comment section below. Thank you for checking out the video today. Thank you very much. I'll see you in the next one.